Hello, everybody. You are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter to learn even more about how you can be healthy naturally. Now, I'm really excited about our show today. We have a very unusual show because we're going to be talking about the healing power of skateboarding. Now, most of the time when you think about natural healing, you're going to think about things like Reiki, and I'm a Reiki master, and herbs, and I use herbs in my practice, and flower essences, and I recommend all kinds of flower essences, and nutrition, and I use food healing, and um, and exercise which is part of what we're gonna be talking about because all kind of movement is very healing for your body. Today we've got a very special guest for you today, Jennifer Fennell. Now what's unique about Jennifer, she is a skateboard grip artist, which means that she uh, creates art for kids to put on their skateboards And she is the founder of Skateboard Girl Army. You can find out more about her and her wonderful work at finnellgrip.com. And all the money that she earns as a skateboard grip artist goes back into her mission, which is to help kids. Now, when again, when we look at this broader picture of what is natural healing, part of what we're doing, we're healing ourselves with natural healing, but we're also wanting to make a bigger contribution. And one of the three ways to be happy in life um, includes life meaning. So when you make a difference the way that Jennifer does, that contributes to great happiness. Welcome, Jennifer Fennell. Thank you so much, Catherine. I am, I'm a huge fan of yours, so thank you for all your work. Now, Jennifer, part of what's unique about you is that you didn't start skateboarding until you were 37 years old. Yes. And, uh, and so how long have you been skateboarding now? Well, as of December 24th, 2012, it will be five years. And I, uh, I knew the first day that I started um, skateboarding and that I didn't, when I didn't fall, that it was, I was good to go. It was I had enough core balance for my youth to to get me at the beginning phases of skateboarding. Yeah, and so you know, so many times when we think about skateboarding, we think about kids, especially teenagers. And then I know that you have a personal mission to help the teenagers through skateboarding. Yes. Now, Jennifer, why do you consider skateboarding to be a healing art? Well. There's, there's so many different facets of skateboarding. The one um, part that you learn in a lot of natural healing is living in the moment, the here and the now. And when you're on your skateboard, you can't be anywhere else. So just from the beginning, it's a meditative practice. Um, and then the other part is, is when I'm in certain um, areas, like we have a bowl, which is a place where you can pretty much glide like you were surfing. Um, I'll do breathing exercises. Like I'll, and I teach the teenagers when I do, um, or anyone for that matter, when we're doing bowl work is I'll just tell them, repeat, relax, take a deep breath. It's okay. And so just being in there, um, it just makes a huge difference in your life. So that's pretty cool. So it's almost like the yoga of skateboarding. And I'm actually getting a little group of um, people together and doing some yoga poses on skateboards while we're actually moving. Um, my, uh, I guess my mission is, is if you can't do the tricks, then at least let's do something that, you know, helps the balance and helps move uh, your body, but in a graceful way. Now, I know that you go to skateboard parks all over the Atlanta, Georgia area. How old are the kids that are primarily your mission to help? Well, I mean, you have kids from, you know, seven, eight years old, all the way up to 20s and 30s and 40s, if you can believe that. And so when people come in 
at all different levels. It's like we've all started at the same spot. So there's that camaraderie of the youth and the the elders who are all kind of just one big family. So you go from park to park and you know, you know, a quarter of the people there, half the people there, because that's their gym. That's their exercise place. Just looking at skateboarding from a pure exercise point of view, I know you've got balanced work, which works on your core, getting the front of the body and the back of the body working together. And it's going to be a highly aerobic activity. What do you guess, guesstimate your heart rate to get at? When you're skateboarding, how high does your heart rate go? Well, that, I mean, it's, it's as much as if you're on a cycle doing a spin class and you're at that full fledge. And I mean, I don't know the, the heartbeat, but it's definitely, I mean, there's times where you're huffing and puffing um, after you've done a run. And, and some runs that I take are a minute and a half. I mean, it just depends on the bull. Um, Stone Mountain has a park where I can skate for a minute, you know, 50. And it's like, by the end, I'm, you know, I'm there. It's, there is no, you do not get um, cold. You're not cold in this type of weather. It's, you can put, get up a good sweat. Now, will you share with us, what is the Girl Skateboard Army? Okay, so when I first started skating, um, the the whole thing was is I didn't want to be on the bench because I rode horses when I was younger and um, my ex and his two children all got skateboards for Christmas except for me and I I guess when I rode around the park the one time I had a couple boys teenagers come up and go skateboard mom and dad and I was just like I was so upset and I just felt like you know, what am I doing out here? And then I thought, okay, I'm the only girl. So it's six months in, seven months in. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use the whole field of dreams concept. If you build it, they'll come. So I said, okay, I'm going to start a girl army because I fall, all of us fall, but the girls, our brains are different than the boys. We don't, we are a little bit more hesitant, a little bit more inhibition, you know, so I, um, I was like, I'm going to get these girls together and I have my stepdaughter. And so I just thought in my meditations, I was like, I'm going to come up with some rules. Like I'm just, just going to be a club. And I just throughout, you know, spirituality, I came up with seven rules, to the skateboard girl army. But the reason why we have a skateboard girl army is because we're all battling surfaces on our wooden whips. And so I do this initiation with the girls and we take a selfie and post it on Instagram and get them in the Hall of Fame. And then, you know, sometimes they'll send clips and stuff. But um, if you want me to tell you the rules of Skateboard Girl Army. Absolutely. I, and, okay. and share with share with everybody where we can follow you on Instagram. Because this okay. is very inspiring. Yes, thank you. So um, the on Instagram, it's Skateboard Girl Army. And we have over 700 followers. And we're growing um, internationally. And um, the, my charity work with the grip tape art is Fennel Grip, and that's F-I-N-N-E-L-L-G-R-I-P. So, but um, the Skateboard Girl Army, uh, so seven rules. And this is the initiation that I do for them. I say, okay, rule number one, there are no rules other than these rules. Rule number two, be kind whenever possible. Sometimes you just can't be kind. Rule number three is everybody's president. Rule number four, encourage other girls to skateboard. Rule number five is to love yourself. Rule number five A is to listen to your inner voice. Rule number six is at the beginning of the day or when you're having a bad day, listen to Bob Marley's Three Little Birds, which is don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. And rule number seven is a five-part rule, but all five parts make one happy human being, which is to learn, think about what you learned, help others, love others, and have fun. We have a gang sign and a handshake, and our handshake is a heart, but we slap our hearts to each other, so it's like this, so we go, Psh. and then we have a gang sign, which is a heart, I have to kind of turn around a little bit, a heart separates to a steeple, and it's, or to a steeple, it separates to an arrow, and it's all-encompassing love of everything, and what we do, and the teenage girls love this, is we take, I'll take the little love heart, our gang sign, and I'll sh pretend to shoot them with love. And then they joke around and pretend they die with love and fall on the ground. And, you know, 
And so it's just a way for the girls to know that they're president of the skateboard girl army, that they're, you know, a member of something that's bigger than them. And we've gone down to, um, to, uh, Kona skate park and that had, you know, girls recognize us down there and initiated a bunch of girls. And like, whenever I like to travel alone and go on skatecations. So when I go on a skatecation, I'll go around to different parks and introduce myself, initiate the girls. And then at the end of the night, I know everybody because the girls are friends with the boys. And then I have people taking clips of me or, you know, it's just so much fun. I, I, I don't ever have um, an alone time because they're very small groups of girls, but they're skating. So that's my army. That's so cool. Now, how did you come up with these principles? I just, in my meditation, I was like, okay, I want it to be short. I want it to be fun, but I want it to mean something. So like I took from Fight Club, there are no rules other than these rules. So I figured, you know, get them right off the bat. It's funny. Rule number two, be kind whenever possible. I mean, that's what, that's what we should be. That's what we should do is just be kind. But sometimes you have to stick up for yourself. You have to, you know, and that may not be kind. And, you know, not everyone can be kind. But the rule is to be kind whenever possible. Rule number three, everyone's president. It's like, why wouldn't, why would there be a hierarchy? I mean, we came up with, like there was a group of us sitting around for rule number five, but anyway, rule number four, encourage other girls to skateboard. Like, I mean, if you, if you see a girl out there and she's, you know, not sure what she's doing, you come up to her and you're like, I'm your, I'm your girl, I'm your helper. And then it just breaks the ice and she's there. Encourage other girls to skateboard. Rule number five is to love yourself. Like I teach the girls when I have a teenager that's in need, I made them do a, um, like it was, I don't know, they look at themselves in the mirror and they say, I'm loved, I love myself, I am cherished, and I am more beautiful than the most brilliant flower ever. So I was like, okay, number five, love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, it's like not helping the world, not helping humanity because you are with you forever. You can't get away from yourself. At least that's what we believe right now. So then um, there was a group of girls that, I was like, you know, if you don't listen to your inner voice, then you can be swayed really easily. So, you know, peer pressure. So the girls, this is probably like a year and a half ago, came up with rule number 5A, which is listen to your inner voice. Because I didn't want to do more than seven rules. I mean, it's just too much. Then rule number six is at the beginning of the day, which I do every morning, listen to Bob Marley say that over. It's like, that's, that is the staple because it's the truth. It's like, don't worry about a thing because everything's going to be all right. Even the worst times in your life always tend to be like the best, the best event. You just have to have a little hindsight 2020 to help you out. So, and then whenever the girls, it's funny because I'll get videos, they'll Snapchat me and they'll be playing Bob Marley's Three Little Birds. And you know, someone will say, oh, she's having a horrible day, but we play in Three Little Birds. And I think, you know, that just is a simple way to give them some form of, um, I don't know, backup or some type of thing to help them. And then rule number seven, when I was a child growing up, my dad used to tell me to learn, learn, learn every day before I left for school, literally from first grade to, to senior year. And so I was like, okay, so my dad brainwashed me in a good way to teach me to learn. Well, I love to learn. I learn every day. And so I was thinking, okay, so learn, learn, learn. But then what about thinking about what you learned? Like you could just learn and then not think about it. So I want them to like have a tiered approach because the smartest, the smartest society is also the most enlightened society. So learn, think about what you learn and then help others. Because if you don't help anyone, then you're really not authentically happy. I mean, that's part of what God has given us the, the feeling to assist other people. And then you're, I guess payment is that you feel amazing, whether you do it narcissistically or not narcissistically for altruistic purposes, like you're helping others and then um, have fun. That's the last one. That was, that was like the most important because when I started skateboarding, that is so much fun. Like you get hurt and you have an amazing time learning out how to muscle memory, how to fall, how to, you know, maneuver yourself. But if you don't have fun in this world, then what's the point? So I just say, let's have fun. 
And then the handshake and the gang sign is just spreading love. It's like, you know, if there's gangs out there, let's be a gang too. And let's, you know, I want to, we're going to come up with t-shirts and hats and stuff like that and paraphernalia. But I mean, for right now, it's just grassroots effort and all the girls themselves are um, just, I mean, I've got a couple of them that are memorizing the actual like rules. Like these 16 year old girls are coming over and I can do the rules too. And we sit, we sit together and, you know, so the rules just came just divinely. It's, it's like everything was just meant to be. It was like, it was set in stone and I just came into it and it's rolling, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to point out for our audience, the skateboard girl army is Jennifer Fennell's service. And she's working with teenage girls who are not the easiest people in the world to work with. What are the particular issues that the teenagers that you work with um, are dealing with and that you feel skateboarding, uh, uniquely skateboarding, empower, empowers them to overcome that maybe other sort of therapies couldn't reach them with? Well, the big thing is, is that one is the skateboarding, they have a group, they have somewhere to go. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not, you know, doing naughty things when they go there, because trust me, they do, and um, including yesterday. Um, but it's, I'll say to them, come on, let's go skate, or let's go do this, or it just gives them that, um, the confidence that you don't typically have. Like, there was, um, I don't know, you know, this one particular teenager, she, um, she's like one of my favorites because of the transformation, but she had been you know, eyeing me out for three or four weeks. And, you know, of course, all the kids at the, the high school, they know me, but they don't know me. They, you know, hearsay and, oh, Mama Jen, Mama Jen. And uh, so I saw her at the park and she had, you know, a fair amount of cuts on her arm. And I, I played it off because I don't want to, you know, I guess point it out and, you know, it's, I can get to it a different way. So I, it was pretty cold out and I initiated her into the skateboard girl army. And then I was like, okay, gave her some lessons and I was like, okay, so let's go down this hill. And so she goes down the hill and, um, she falls and gets, gets back up and comes over. And I said, Hey, you know, I don't know if you cut or not, but, um, when you fall and you get that bruise or you get that cut, it's way better than if you cut yourself because you can actually look in that mirror and you can, you can say, I earned that. I did something to get that wound. And if that's, if they're cutting because they're unhappy with society, there's too much social media pressure. There's too much pressure for things that, you know, we had when we were younger, but it wasn't like this. This is, they're getting inundated with just, every bit of media that they can be thrown at them at three second intervals. So it, the skateboarding teaches them a to calm down and slow down, but it also gives them like, it gives a purpose in life. Like if you, if you are sad and your parents are upsetting you or life is hard and cutting is the only way to release your tension, then I got, I got enough cuts for you. I mean, I am inundated with tattoos on, on, you know, both elbows and that's with pads. I've had, you know, my face messed. I mean, I've had so many injuries, but I can look at myself and go, yeah, I did something to get that. And other stuff in the background, it's not, it's not as big of a deal when you're, you know, walking around a little bit sore and you think, oh, you know, it's, that's not big. That's not as big of a deal when I'm, dealing with his injuries. So, um, it just teaches confidence. And, and the, the end of that story of the girl, um, she told me probably like, I don't know, three weeks later, she came up and she's like, look, 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 I earned this bruise. I earned this bruise. It was so cute. And, um, but she had written me, I guess probably like six months later, a text message. And it was like, just, I mean, I couldn't stop crying it was like you the day that you told me about the cutting and you know I had one little cutting incident when I was 14 or 15 which actually made me say to myself I if there's a 15 or 14 or 13 year old or anybody that needs help that the the personal I don't know personal 
hell was completely um, taken over my life and I didn't have anyone to help me. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this for these teenagers no matter what. And then they support each other. So if I'm the role model and I say, okay, well, this is how we're doing it. Like if the girls don't like someone and I'm like, no, we're friends with everybody. If you don't like that person, it's fine. You don't have to like them, but we're going to be kind. We're going to be sweet and we're going to treat them as good as we can. And then they do that without even me doing anything. They, they take it upon themselves. And so the girl sent the text message was like, you changed my life. I never cut. I don't cut anymore. She was a CD student. Now she's an A student. I mean, every bit aspect of her life has completely changed because of skateboarding. I mean, she wrote me a letter. Um, I don't know if we ever have any time. If we have time for me to read it, it's very short. But she wanted to write it for this actual interview. So can, can I read it for you? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, okay. So, yeah, so while Jennifer's looking for the letter, again, we want to really expand our view of what healing is. And when you do anything that increases your confidence, when you do anything that helps you to face your fears, and when you do anything of greater good of service to the planet and to others, that's very powerful healing. It is. Okay, so here is the letter. The most Im in the most important times, which has which have shaped me into who I am and will be in the future. Mama Jen has been one of, the, one of my biggest supporters. When she introduced me to the Skateboard Girl Army, I was shy and not very confident in myself. With her encouragement, I found a new passion for skateboarding. Whenever I would have a bad day or something made me upset, Jennifer would meet me at the skate park and we'd go on a skate date. This included skating together fast around the whole park while talking about our days. Over the time I've gotten to spend with Jennifer, I've matured into a loving, open-minded person. She has brought me so much happiness into my life. My alarm is set every morning to the song she met, song mentioned in rule number six of the Skateboard Girl Army, which is Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. By following the five parts of what makes one happy human being, my life, has, my life as president of the Girl Army I have found my purpose in the world for right now. Learn, think about what you've learned, help others, love others, and have fun. Jennifer is my mentor and has shown me how exactly skateboarding can change lives. And that's what it did to me. Oh, that is just so beautiful and so powerful. Now, again, we're going to have people literally all over the world listening. And again, where can people find out more about the Skateboard Girl Army? Because there's lots of teenage girls who need to have more confidence. Yes. So, and, and women too. It's not, I mean, I've got women of all ages that are in the Army. I initiate 30s and 40s and 50-year-olds. Anyway, um, it's Skateboard Girl Army on Instagram. And I also have a Facebook page, but because I've got so many irons in my fire metaphorically speaking um the instagram page is updated most i do have a facebook page but um and i do talk to people via facebook on the skateboard girl army but skateboard girl army yes well how does skateboarding empower you to overcome your fears i mean i see people doing all these tricks like you doing tricks you're 42 right yes i'm 42 Doing um, tricks on a skateboard. So how does that empower you to overcome your fear? Well, I mean, I, I had an incident that happened yesterday, and it's so perfect that it happened yesterday. But when I first started skateboarding, um, the falls were just, it was crazy. I mean, it was like the first, the first fall, I wasn't wearing a helmet, and everyone says, wear your helmet. I said, no, I'm wearing my helmet. And then they say, wear your wrist guards. And I'm a hairstylist, hair artisan, so I should be wearing my wrist guards. So I didn't wear wrist guards. I didn't wear a helmet. I thought I was going to be cool, and I'm just going to cruise around. And the first incident happened when my trucks got caught on um, a concrete sidewalk, and I went down like a tree, like a big tree. And I slammed my head, and I went to the doctor, and he said, I said, can I play this off as I was wearing a helmet? And he said, um, whether you wear a helmet or not, it doesn't matter you still have a head injury. And so I was like, okay, fine. So then I had another head injury with a helmet. 
and received stitches on top of that. So it's like these injuries, so these are the beginning phases. So this is like, I pretend like a video game skate one, right? So then I've had other injuries where when I had my pads on and I had, you know, elbow pads on where I've literally rubbed two or three layers of skin off. But those injuries weren't as bad as the injuries from the very beginning. So it's like every single day you get, if you fall, you get more used to that. You get more, you learn how to fall, you roll, you don't, you don't put your hands down or then I have pads on. So anyway, so yesterday I, um, there's a big puddle and there's different people that were trying to go into the bowl. So I just told everyone, I was like, I'm going to stay in the deep end and y'all go, y'all stay in the shallow end. So there was like, I considered it a lake. And so I'm going really fast and high up on the walls. And I see that this, like, I'm getting ready to go directly into the lake. So I, over five years, gained cat-like reflexes to push my skateboard out of the way from landing in the water. I dive technically into the water. Not a single, the only thing that was hurting was my pride and my pants were soaking wet. I mean, it was like, I couldn't believe I went around to the whole, to all my, you know, teenage 20 year old boys. And then the girls were doing something else, but I went around, I was like, I just one upped. I just got from skate, skate one to skate two. I just, you know, graduated because I couldn't believe that I had enough time and I was going so fast that I was able to, to do something to alter my, you know, alter the situation um, where the skateboard didn't get wet, the bearings didn't get wet. I didn't have to spend, you know, forever cleaning everything out. So it wouldn't rust. So it was like, I just couldn't believe how the, in five years, what happens to the body and, and the falling and you don't get hurt as much. So that's, that's the big thing is that these guys, they're not getting hurt. They're getting, they're getting hurt, but most of them are getting superficial, you know, scrapes and bruises and everyone feels like a warrior when they get done. So it's like a win-win, even though you think, oh gosh, you're getting hurt. But no, you look at yourself and you say, oh my gosh, I earned that. So, so how does facing your fear on the skateboard translate into facing your fears in the rest of your life? Well, I mean, the big thing is, is like, like I said before, I mean, I feel like a warrior. So if, if I'm doing that, if I'm like, there was one incident where it was two incidents, actually. Um, there's a, a, we call it the peanut bowl and it is a seven foot wall and it's literally like this and it's vertical and the coping on it is rounded so when you drop in you're dropping in like that i mean it's like and then and then you drop into an 11 foot wall or 10 foot wall so august 31st of 2016 i dropped in five times and out of the five times i made it three out of five and when i when you're dropping into that distance, that just the whole, the whole, um, geometry of it, it's intense. When I went to work the next day, I was, it was hard for me to move. I mean, I, I was, I was hurt, but I was so just like, if I can do that, I can do anything. There's not one thing on this planet that I can't do when I literally faced death. I mean, they, they have on the rules at the skate park, like rule number one, you can die from this sport. And I've seen people get knocked out and fall asleep with a helmet on. So then six months later, I was like, I'm dropping into that pool again. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I did it. And out of the five times, I made it twice and I ate it three. So I'm like, okay, so 10 times I'm five for five, five wins, five wins you know and so i just just doing that and standing over and looking down you know in a cliff it's literally like you're on a wooden on a wooden popsicle stick standing over a cliff looking down and saying amygdala hippocampus i am going to rule you i am going to to take that willpower of i'm going to die right now and say no you're not Put your foot down. I tell the kids whenever they're dropping in, I say the same things to myself. Push it down, lean forward. 
And if I can push it down and lean forward and sometimes eat it and sometimes don't eat it, then, you know, it's just, there's nothing that anyone can take away from me because I've done it. It's super cool. It is super cool. That is very, very inspiring. Now, Jennifer, some of us, however, who are listening go, oh my God, I don't really want to have a head injury. I've got things to do. Yeah. So what are the most common injuries in skateboarding and how do you overcome them? I, I guess part of it's getting good enough so you don't wipe out that often, but what are some of the common injuries? Okay. So, well, the first thing is, is the boys that are doing the tricks, they wipe out I don't know, 50, 100. I mean, they, they miss more than they make. Okay. So they're falling all the time, but when you do it enough, you don't get hurt as much, but a lot of their injuries are ankle, you know, foot, um, wrists and all that. And some of them get, you know, pretty bad head, head injuries and they don't, of course, most of them don't wear their helmets and I do, but you know, my injuries have been, I've hit my head twice three times with the helmet on, um, you know, shoulder dislocations, fingers breaking, you know, lots of concrete tattoos. But I mean, the thing is when I trip up a set of stairs now, I don't fall. Like I legit in my day to day life, I'm like a graceful, you know, ballerina compared to what I was, you know, before I started skateboarding. So, you know, I think, what when I the incident that happened yesterday where I was able to fall not get hurt of course I had my my knee pads on but I was able to like actually maneuver um and not get hurt then you know that's one of those things you're gonna get hurt in life like no matter what and if you have the core balance that you wouldn't normally have then you're not gonna get hurt in real life as much and you know pain and suffering is a part of the human condition so you know, it's not that I'm going looking for it, but I really get hurt a lot less than I did when I was, um, before I started skateboarding. So. Yeah, and the common, um, what are the safety equipment that somebody needs to be sure to get if, when they skateboard? You mentioned a helmet. Yes, well, the helmet, and the helmet has to fit right. I mean, that's the number one thing. And I always tell people, you know, they think helmets, especially the older guys, like if I see an older guy coming into the skate park and he's not wearing a helmet or he is wearing a helmet, I always go to people that are wearing helmets and I'm like, thank you. Because first of all, you care about how you're going to get home. You know, you're going to get a thousand dollar taxi ride to the hospital or, you know, who's going to have to, you know, pick up after you or whatever if you have a head injury. So that's, you know, my big thing is that the helmet. Um, and uh, I love my wrist guards. I mean, these kids that don't wear their wrist guards and then they break their wrist. And I'm like, okay, so what happens if you skate and break your other wrist and who's going to, you know, wipe your booty for you when you go to the bathroom? Like you're a teenage boy. You, do, you don't want your mom to, you know, have to do that, your dad. And then, um, but a lot of them have to end up wearing the wrist guards when they get hurt or after they get hurt. And then I absolutely adore my knee pads. I mean, I have these thick... You know, I don't care what I look like because, I mean, I'm really out there just to have fun. But my thick knee pads, they have saved me so many times. And even though my elbow, um, my, you know, elbow guards have not protected me against superficial, um, you know, shavings off of my skin layers. I mean, they've, that you do not want to get an elbow injury when you're a hairstylist. So I just go full pads and, you know, some guys, they have to wear the ankle guards and stuff like that, but I'm not, I don't feel like really breaking any ankle stuff. So I'm trying to stay on the ground um, more than jumping. So, or Aline. Jennifer, how does, uh, we'll call you Jen Mama. Is that what the kids call you? They call me Mama Jen. And that was started by a 20 something year old at the time. Um, if you looked at him on the street, you would go, okay, that's a thug or whatever. He's, you know, got dreads and tatted up and, you know, he's just, I mean, he's a very quiet guy, but he came to me one day and he's like, mama Jen, you are, you are everybody's mom. Like you, you love everyone. Like a mother would love a, a child. So I'm calling you mama Jen and it stuck like everyone. I mean, yesterday, um, some kids 
you know, what's up, Mama Jen? I'm like, I don't even know you. <laughs> so. so, Mama Jen, how does skateboarding help you improve your balance? Well, the big thing is, is you're pro primarily not ever on, you know, a two, a flat surface, but when you're on a flat surface, I mean, there's hills and stuff, but when you're on a flat surface, um, you know, just cruising around, you're, you're using everything. But then when you start going on curved surfaces, you start building up your core muscles so um, intensely. It's like, I can't believe some of the times that uh, I've almost fallen and I haven't just based off of my core muscles. But I have some exercises that I have people do um, when they're first starting to skateboard because I skate, I'm a goofy footed skateboarder, but I also skate regular. It's called switch. So um, what I do is I have them stand up on their board, but then go all the way down and grab their board. So they're legitimately like building every single bit of core muscle from their head all the way down to their feet. And so I just, you know, we'll go around and skateboard and everyone go board grab and, you know, everyone gets down really low. And then I have another, um, another trick that I have people do when they're kick turning and kick turning is another way to either move or steer and it's where you take your board and you just go back and forth and back and forth and I'll make them do where they touch the ground and then they'll kick turn. And so what they're doing is they're just in mainly intensely building up, you know, their thigh, their stomach, their chest, every bit of their core. And, you know, the longer you do it, the more core balance you get. I mean, you just, you see people in the very beginning and even me in the very beginning, um, learning how to skate and then learning how to skate switch it's like there's like in a month you increase your skill set in two months you increase your skill set but then when you take a break and you you do these exercises and i'll make people do squats like i'll actually my training exercise when i first start skateboarding um i'll do a, a bull run and i'll do it like almost in a squatted um seated position and I'm not worried about, you know, how fast I'm going or where I'm going or anything. I'm just literally trying to stay in a squatted position. I go, I stretch, I come back, and then I do it again. I stretch. And then the third run, it's like I'm so – I have so much power, but I have so much control. So it's like a – I don't know. It's like a major training exercise. But the, the best part is you're having fun. I mean, that's, that is the number one, you're on a roller coaster that you get to decide where you go. And every day that you do skate, you do get better. So your core just, that's it. And control, M minor, minor um, the, the detail oriented, that also is very helpful. Now, how does skateboarding help you lose weight? I know you've had some really positive experiences with that. Yep. Well, I mean, the big thing is, is because it was fun or because it is fun, it's, I mean, you don't feel like you're doing anything, but having the wind, you know, beneath your wings kind of, so, so to speak. And it's like the weight just started coming off. I lost like 35, 40 pounds in just having fun. Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe. And everyone's like, what are you doing? But they knew that I was getting toned. Like they knew that I was skateboarding and they knew that I was getting toned but they didn't, um, they didn't think that it could have been that, that exercise to produce that much results. I mean, I, I won't ever go back. I mean, I, I hate for the gym people for me, but I won't ever go back to a gym. I mean, and we can skate. If I, if I can't skateboard, then I do yoga or do those kinds of things. But I mean, if the weather's gorgeous today and I'm, I'm going skateboarding today, even after the fall yesterday. I feel amazing. Not hurt at all. So, yeah. Now, what are some common misconceptions about skateboarding? Well, um, the main thing is, is, you know, skateboarding is kind of that underground rogue, you know, thuggish, non, you know, anarchy and all that. And you know, I want to say that is probably the biggest misconception because when you go up and talk to these people, they've all had major confidence building as they skate. And I have seen so many times I'll go to the park and yeah, you've got a group of kids that are being, you know, 
silly or bullying to someone. But the majority of the time, you'll see someone go up to a kid and say, hey, if you put your foot here or you put your foot there, you can do that trick. And it's across the country. Like it's across, it's across the world. I could probably say that any skate park that I would go to, I would feel like a family member. And, you know, these people are the most tenacious, I think probably some of the smartest people you've ever met because they have to, um, they have to say, okay, well, here's this apparatus and I'm going to hurl my skateboard and tap the tail or, you know, grind, you know, whatever. And they're thoughtful and they're innovative and they're, they do the trick again and again and again. And it's like, it's a different type of mentality. And a lot of them, when you get into the core, they are just really good people. So that's a huge misconception, I think. Now, um, are there other sports activities that help you become a better skateboarder? So let's say somebody's listening to this and think, thinking, okay, I'm 42, like mom and Jen, but hey, I, I'm tired of the gym. Uh, I could do this and I could do this with my teenagers. Are there kind of, are there activities maybe such as yoga that would you could do to help prepare to become a better skateboarder? 100%. So um, when I went skiing last year, I had a, a ski lesson regarding like how you put your hands. And I went back to the park and I mean, I skied for four days. I went back to the park and it was like just a whole door opened up for me. I couldn't believe how amazing my skateboarding changed in four days from a ski lesson. And then the, um, there was someone else that taught me about, they took a, a, skate, uh, a skateboard without any trucks or wheels on it and put it on a foam roller and balanced on the foam roller. And they actually have um, someone on Instagram that's selling, you know, selling the, a different type of foam roller that you can put your, you know, a skateboard and, and balance. And that was completely changed the, the ball game for me because there were times where I thought, oh wow, I'm I'm above, um, in front of the motion or behind the motion, but I never got hurt. But I mean, pretty much any sport. I mean, it's it's like they're all hand in hand. There's a lot of soccer players that that skateboard, um, and then there's some you know people that do parkour. But I think the big thing is is the thought process. If you can get the muscle me memory down for any sport, and then especially you know skateboarding it comes. It's like, you know, the 10,000 hour rule. If you do something for 10,000 hours, you're, you know, you can become an expert at it. But I think there are people that are not, that they're pretty clumsy to begin with, um, that say, oh, I can't do it. If you put your mind and your efforts, you know, to something, I honestly think that anyone could skateboard and, and, but any sport does help, I think. So. Now, Jennifer Fennell, you are an artist and you create grips that go on the skateboards and people, our audience can find these grips at finellgrip.com. So I know you've been skateboarding for the past five years. When did you start creating art for skateboards? Well, I started pretty much about four or five months after I started skateboarding because I would, maybe it was, it was less than that. Cause I was always curious, like, how do I, where do I put my feet? Like, because that was the biggest thing. And, and everyone pretty much does the same thing when they first start skateboarding. So I started drawing on the skateboard, um, based off of where my feet were. And it was a cool design. And I had some of the teenagers who were hanging out with my, um, with my stepson and someone was like, Oh, will you draw me something on my skateboard? So I was like, okay, fine. So I started drawing and what I was doing was I was buying the grip. And then I was painting on the grip and then selling it to them for $12, which was way super cheap. But I mean, they're young teenagers and they didn't have a lot of money. So, and then I take all $12 and just donate it to charity. And so, um, the, it went from trees and then someone said, Oh, let's do, you know, do a three toe tie dyed sloth, you know, it's behind me. And then, um, someone asked me, this is one of the coolest stories was 
Um, this guy came up to me and said, I really love your artwork. I would love for you to do a line of Judah. I'm just going to give you money and I don't want anything for it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is so cool. So I was, I was reading something and they were talking about how the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers were in competition with each other to see who could give more back to charity. And I was like, you know what? I don't, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to be, but why not compete with them? Like, why not try to like change society and, and to have the haves and the have nots be a little bit more, um, evened out. So the grip, the grip tape, the painting on, you know, one per sheet and one per person I was like, if I'm going to go big, if this, if I'm going to be able to make any money, either I'm gonna have to charge a ton of money per sheet of grip, which is not going to happen, or I'm going to have to mass produce. So I started researching and found, you know, printer company and, um, local. And unfortunately we had to part ways because, you know, no one's printing on grip tape. I mean, they're, my grip tape was damaging printer heads. And it's like, I don't have that kind of money to be fixing people's printer heads. So I found a printer and just said, okay, I'm going to will it. If God wants it, then I'll be your vehicle and God, you do it. So what, what I've done was I wanted to be serious about it. So I was like, I'm going to just start donating money um, to Skatistan, which is an organization that they went into countries like Afghanistan, Cambodia, and got the girls skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And so then they've grown so much. And I think Tony Hawk backs them and other big skaters back them. And they have a thing like, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Skatistan. So every quarter when I have to pay my taxes, I was like, I don't care how much grip I sell. I'm just going to donate the profits to charity. So there's a skate shop um, called Ruin that's in um, Dunwoody. And they've been in Ros they've been off of Rosa Road in Sandy Springs. And then they moved to Dunwoody. And, you know, we're skate community. We're all family. We know each other. And so they allowed me to have my grip tape in their, their shop. And so then I've got, you know, the Layback Grind, which is a Brook Run, and some other, um, and then Duncan Creek. I've got grip in different places, and I'm looking to go global. But the whole concept is, is, you know, if you can skate on a piece of artwork, which is, you know, I feel like it's been divinely inspired, the artwork. But if you can skate on the artwork, and then I give my profits back to charity, then at some point, it can get big enough to be where my big goal is, which is I want student savings accounts. I want students to get um, paid to go to school. Like, I don't know. I just think if someone from the lowest, poorest place in the United States of America or anywhere over the world, that they can benefit. And hopefully I can grow the, this big enough to be where we can have a CPA signing up students so they can get paid and have money when they graduate. Thank you, Jennifer Fennell. This is a beautiful vision. You can find out more about Jennifer and her beautiful art at FennellGrip.com. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Carrick, and medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. Find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com. While you're there, sign up for my newsletter. And remember that natural healing is a bigger picture. When you contribute to the world at large, you're going to be a happier person. And one of the ways you can start healing yourself and the planet is by joining the Skateboard Girl Army with Jennifer Fennell and finding out about her great work on Instagram. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time.